All right, we're gonna talk about binary acids. Hydrogen attached to one other atom. The acid strength, Ka, is correlated with the bond dissociation energy, the bond between the hydrogen and whatever that other atom is. So for an example, they show you these acids, hydrofluoric, hydrochloric, hydrobromic, and hydroiodic, those are all halogens that it's attached to. And then they can show you that the bond energy goes from a high and then lower and lower and lowest. On the other hand, if you start thinking about the sizes of these things, the radius of the ion created, whether it's the fluoride, the chloride, the bromide, or the iodide, follows exactly the way you would expect as smallest to largest based just on where it is in the periodic table. But what they're trying to tell you here is that the hydrofluoric is less than the hydrochloric is less than the hydrobromic is less than the hydroiodic. And there's just one other interesting thing about this because it follows the bond energy pattern, it follows the ionic radius pattern, it follows a dipole moment pattern. So the Ka follows the same pattern. If you start looking at these numbers, there is a big jump between the hydrofluoric and the hydrochloric. Between the hydrofluoric and the hydrochloric. These are all strong acids, but hydrofluoric is a weak acid. So what's going on here? They were talking about the bond dissociation energy. This has a very high bond dissociation energy. They're simply talking about it in terms of the acid itself without talking about where is that proton going. If it's in water, that proton is coming loose here and joining up with an oxygen. Now, if you go and you look up what the values of electronegativity are, you discover Oxygen is intermediate between fluorine and chlorine for an electronegativity. What else can you go look up that might shed some light on this? What the bond energy is for H attached to O. And that turns out to be 463. So it's right in here, in between these two, same way as the electronegativity. So if you stop and think about it, when you break a bond between hydrogen and chlorine, you have to put in 431 kilojoules per mole. And when it forms that bond to the oxygen, it's going to be the recipient. It will be to the, on the good side by 463. On the other hand, if you're trying to break the HF bond, you have to put in 567 and you're only going to get out the 463. So you're on the wrong side of it. So this becomes much less than because of what else is happening overall in the entire reaction. And that's why this ends up being weak compared to these being strong.